Hey guys, Be Good Burb here, and I'm finally back with part two of the Battle Works Without Bricks. Yes, if you're new, this is part two. Uh, part one won't be linked below if you haven't seen it already. Uh, also, sorry for not having uploaded in a while. I've been working on this for a while. My storage has been really full, so I couldn't really record anything. But this is finally out, so. As I was saying, if you're too lazy to watch, go back and watch part one, I'll try to catch you up as much as I can. Basically, if you don't know, the Battlebricks is a tower defense game where you send out units to destroy the enemy base. Anybody also sends out units, and you need to make sure to protect your base while trying to destroy the enemy base. Bricks are a sort of higher currency used to buy units, banks, cannons, and cards, which give you units. Like last time, the rules are pretty simple. Spending bricks on any of those aforementioned uses is not allowed. Uh, using them to gain time of double experience is allowed because that isn't helping me beat any levels that would have been impossible anyways. It just helps me get the challenge out faster. With all of that out of the way, let's pick up where we left off uh, moving on to chapter 3. We start off by being introduced to a new trait, being black traded units. They have a gimmick of applying a death mark effect, which means every hit will tick down a counter. Upon the counter reaching zero, it'll multiply the damage of the strike that made it reach zero by a large amount. But to counteract this, uh, just like with the red units, uh, some units can do extra damage to these enemies. The only one of these units we have as at the moment is Rocket and its alt Crockett Battler. Anyways, our first four levels here gives four new enemies to deal with. The first one being Darkheart, a three hit burst melee unit that's frail, uh, but its last hit will immediately trigger the death mark. Outlaw, another frail melee unit, but it does heavy damage and it does extra damage against our walls. McPenny, another melee unit that attacks super quickly if it gets hit. And Patrol, a unit that will lock one of our units in place and make that unit unable to be hit directly. Upon the patrol dying, it'll be free. We also get shown very quickly they are not afraid to throw returning chapter 2 enemies at, at us right off the bat. The first level has gallants, and the second level has pirate enemies. After beating level 5, which just throws all the new enemies together, we have level 6, which gives us a new, another new melee enemy being Butcher Battler. If it attacks uh, the same unit three times in a row without killing it, it'll, it'll go berserk, increasing its fire rate as well as giving it damage resistance. Then there's the first stage that really gave us issues in Chapter 3, being Hospital Nightmare. It introduces hazards. Basically, hazards are something that affects all units on the board, unless they have a specific immunity that prevents them from being affected. The one here heavily lowers the range of units, basically make, turning our ranged units into essential melee units. So, units that are actually melee units are really good here. But that's not the real issue here. It's just part of the issue. The real issue being the new enemy, Amputator. A tanky enemy that heals every single time it attacks. And they can very quickly stack up. And th that is just what happens, and I have to end up restarting the level. This time, I use Bomb Battler to clear them very quickly. Bomb Battler will be being one of our only effective methods of killing these due to their high HP and really quick and really quick regeneration. The next level is only relevant to us to introduce the fire hazards, which just burns all units on the field that aren't immune to fire. Level 9 gave me DJ Radical flashbacks. There's a new enemy being Mad Scientist who will throw a table that has infinite piercing and slows everything it hits. Fun, as well as them also having the recoil cannon, being the same cannon they had on DJ Radical. Cannon pushes back and stuns. It, this level took me so long to beat that I ended up stacking three titans. But we eventually defeated them. Now we have level 10, and also our first boss of chapter 3. Dr. Bright is a very aggressive boss. He's melee and he's very quick, so... He'll be rushing to our front before we can even finish setting up our economy. As well, he has an AoE attack that'll blind our units, meaning they'll have less range and have a chance to miss. Every few attacks, he has a secondary ability, which can alternate between blinding all of our units at once, or healing his backups over time. 
which are both insanely brutal, and we end up dying to him on our first run. I really couldn't effectively stall him because the amputators were guarding him so well. I actually decided to expend my EXP that I built up from the levels, but even after that, I still lost. So now I decided to take a quick detour over to finish 2 Star Chapter 1, so let's take a peek over there. We got to over to Do Star Doombringer, which was pretty easy. I knew it was going to ca cause some issues, so I did grind Ultimate Paintball and max my economy. I played pretty much the same as 1 Star Doom, using Talamons to protect uh, Crockets and Soccer Battlers in instead of my Rockets and Ballers that I had previously. And because we have all these new alt forms, we end up beating it first try pretty easily. I decided to upgrade Battler, Trowel, Sword, as well as Bomb. My Bomb upgrades giving me its alt form, a Kamikaze. Kamikaze is way faster and doesn't have to charge its Bomb up once it reaches uh, target. It just detonates instantly. But to counteract this, it has way less HP and does less damage, as well as having less blast radius. But it's pretty great for killing the amputators since you don't have to worry that much about protecting it. Because of this, we can pretty easily kill Dr. Bright and finish up this level. Now we have levels that take place in a mansion. Let's we'll start off with a new enemy being Jester Battler. We we'll walk up to our units and scare them away, uh, making them run away from a short, for a short duration. This can be really annoying at times because it can make us be stalled for a long time. Then there's Blinder. An enemy who'll target our unit farthest away from him and uh, do a splash effect that blinds them. This is the same effect as Dr. Bright being that we have less range and have a chance to miss. Which can very easily ruin our backline. The next level seems fine, but Mad Scientist is back along with a fire effect so we physically cannot build up a backline. I spent forever on this level, but, but eventually I give up. What's my plan now? Well... Yep, oh, we're back here again. I breezed through 3 Star Chapter 1 pretty easily, killing Paintmaster and Jetrock without breaking a sweat. Then we get to 3 Star Dooms for our Brick Battle. This is going to be no easy task. This was shown by me getting humbled very quickly in early game. Next round, I managed to actually get over to Doombringer. And managed to keep him in place for a long while. Even though it got a bit sketchy at times. Then he went Berserk. I threw everything I had at him. And thanks to Telemon Spot stalling him for ages, we managed to defeat him. And after that, we claim victory. But for what? Why could I have possibly wanted to go back here? Good experience, maybe? I mean, I could have just grinded for that. No, what I really wanted was a new reward. Basically, after beating a chapter on three stars, you get a mini version of the boss. Little Doom, just like his big counterpart, is very tanky with high defense, but a slow fire rate. Once he dies, he'll do his berserk attack, slamming his hammer and creating a shockwave. Along with this, he's anti-red, meaning that he's resistant to a mad scientist. Exactly what I needed. With Little Doom's help, we managed to claim our re revenge very easily. Another thing Little Doom does is does 3 times damage to bases. Keep that in mind for later. Next level houses Monkey Barrels. A somewhat tanky red enemy that releases a horde of small monkeys upon death. So, splash damage is really good here. But level 15 also has a new enemy, being Little Man. At half health, he'll scream repeatedly damaging our units, which can be very brutal with the death mark effect because it applies it rapidly. But it's possible to kill him before he can do this attack, meaning that for right now he's pretty much a push pushover. Then we have a level bringing back a bunch of red enemies, including Gargans, which Lil Doom helped to handle very well. When we get to level 18, we, when we get to level 18, we get a piano dude. 
He just occasionally sends a piano at, at our furthest unit, doing big splash damage. But he sets up the base, which is pretty annoying, so we really can't kill him until the end of the round. Level 19 is called Sound Cues. There's a new hazard being the lights off that makes us rely on well sound cues. It's pretty easy though, you can pretty much just spam your way through. Reach level 20 being sh talent show, but the boss insecure. He's really fast, but whenever you hit him, he gets knocked back. On our first run, we get pretty quickly humbled. We can barely set up our economy, as well as the boss has a very strong fire effect. Another th annoying thing about this boss is once he gets lo lowered enough, he'll summon some units that'll get added to the queue of units that get summoned from the enemy base. If you don't recognize some of these enemies, it's because they're from sub-chapters, which I haven't done yet, by the way. I'll get to those eventually. I just want to focus on the main chapters for right now. When we lose, I decide to swap Trowel for his ult builder. I haven't mentioned him yet because I haven't used him. From what I remember, this builder was pretty bad, but as I found out, builder is still really good even after it got nerfed. Basically, what he does is he's Trowel, but his walls have double HP. But the cost being that they take 1.5 seconds to build each wall, with Segment having a fourth of the HP. So it takes a full 6 seconds to get the full HP. The reason he's so good here is there isn't much to kill the walls before they can reach full potential. This allowing us to up better upgrade our economy. This allows us to reach the second phase. His painting summon fails and he gets very angry. He starts sacrificing his crowd to kill our backline. Eventually this gets us killed. So I go play 2 Star Chapter 2 and get Lil Doom's ult, Lil Death. <laughs> he trades off his defense for faster fire rate and a second phase, which will sacrifice some of our units, increase his damage, and make him go at very fast speeds. And it's very powerful. This is foreshadowing. He tested it out against Redbeard, and uh... He killed him while he was slowed down. So yeah, that's pretty powerful. So I go back to Insecure, and having Little Death being able to push and let us kill Blinders very easily helped a lot. On second phase, Little Death helped us get the win. And remember how I told you to keep in mind Little Doom doing three times damage to bases? Well, Little Death has that, and... This was well worth it. Little Death Hater, stay mad. Now we have the last few stages. We have four enemies being introduced. The first being Deleter. He has a hyper laser that will one shot at all of our units that aren't immune to any effects. The Little Death and Telemon aren't as good against these guys because they don't get to get their value. But Builder is really good considering his walls are immune to effects, so he can take multiple hyper laser hits. As well, backliners can stay out of reach with using stuff like Battler to tank the hits. Next enemy is Cloak Battler. He becomes invisible when he sees our units and will eventually have his invisibility run out. Aside from that, he's just a decently fast attacking melee unit. Sapper will tar target our weakest unit and stun it. This is only really annoying because he causes our builders to build walls in the backline, which isn't super helpful. The real thing we have to worry about is level 25. But just like the previous two chapters, introduces a huge threat of an enemy, being Fat Boy. As advertised, he is very obese. They will walk to our base with a bomb, completely ignoring everything else we have out. And I think you can guess what happens if he reaches our base. But because he doesn't attack, Little Duff can get really good value on him. We pretty much cl easily clear the rest of the levels. We reach level 29, end of the line.
Oh, and now we're on level 30 already, being Area 51. The boss here is Exec, a ranged boss who stuns our units, meaning the main issue of this fight is being able to push over to him. Early game is pretty simple as we can just stall with builders. They do have outlaws and dark hearts to deal with, but they aren't super hard to deal with. You can just get a croc hit down. <laughs> but then... Exec now is getting the ability to use admin commands, which can either use, be used to buff his backups or debuff our units. Along with this, Fat Boy is here, which can cause some difficult situations to say the least. But we are prepared. Despite getting blinded when he shows up, uh, Fat Boy was pretty easy to kill. But like most strange bosses, the fight is pretty much over once you get to him. But then he goes into phase two, where he, where he kills a bunch of our stuff, teleports to the ba back to the base, and fiery buffs every enemy permanently until he dies. So we have to make it back to him all over again while he's still using his commands. But this can be a good thing. If he uses jail enemies, it'll make it so he has nothing to target and he'll start walking towards us, making it easier to get over to him. He reaches phase three where... This is basically just TDS April Fool's 2022. As well, exec's commands are hidden. But you could pretty easily tell what he did. We have to make it over to him as soon as possible. He again killed a bunch of our units, so it's hard to get over to him. But once we do, we can finally kill him. I didn't expect a first try on this boss, but I'll take it. Destroy the enemy base, and that's chapter 3. It turns out it is possible without bricks. But we're not done here yet. We still have chapter 2, 2, and 3 star, as well as chapter 3, 2, and 3 star. So we gotta get moving. I'll only be talking about bosses here since pretty much everything else stands little to no chance. In which case, I have some revenge to claim. If you don't remember, last, last video, TJ Radical gave me hell on one star, and I'm here to return the favor. We start with builders in early game, which proved quite effective. But little death in first phase seemed, acted like more of a hazard, getting stunned and killed pretty easily. Despite this, he quickly let us trigger phase two. Which came down to the wire, but bomb clutched it out. Barely landing a hit on the Radmobile and killing it. Now we have two star Turking to deal with. Builder plus bomb clears the other game rather easily, and we use some crockets to make a push over to Turking. And pretty much everything else doesn't matter until we get to phase three. I thought little death would be great here, but it turns out not so much. Eventually, he catches us lacking without a telepod to protect his attack. Next round, I'll bring Little Doom, because it's an extra unit to tank the attacks from Turking in Phase 3. As well as just general tanking attacks. And also, Little Doom's very good for clearing backlines with its fi final slam. Going into Phase 3, Little Doom works alongside Atelwan to protect our backline, which means we get a bunch of damage off immediately. Even after losing our stack, we can pretty easily build back up and finish the battle. I go straight back into Chapter 2, because we ain't done yet. Going into 3-star Redbeard, he gives us some troubles, but not issues we haven't faced before. We use our cannon to destroy the backline and let's push over to him, and... Yowch. One kamikaze later, and that was pretty simple. Back at it again, getting revenge on DG Radical. First phase is pretty easy, but second phase gives us a bunch of issues. Mainly involving a little death. We die after a while. And bring in Little Doom instead. We eventually get a good phase 2 entrance with a bunch of Little Dooms using their death ability on the Radmobile as well. And we get a bomb off immediately on top of that. Eventually, we destroy a stupid car and claim victory. With those simpletons out of the way, you could go to suffer on 3 star Turking. Just like with Doombringer, Turking is so much harder compared to the other bosses in the chapter. And I knew this was going to be a huge issue. And seeing as I didn't even get to phase 2 on my first run, I was right about that. So we didn't really stand a chance. Next run, we do about a million times better and actually get to phase 3. But he clears pretty much everything with it. And just like in 2 star, I get caught lacking without anything to defend his attack. On my next run, I actually managed to build up a backline in phase 3 and finally win. 
After destroying the enemy base, we go claim a reward. Just like with Doom, we get Lil Turking. It's like his bigger counterpart. He is a tanky unit that does uh, fire damage. At half HP, he'll heal and do a big attack. Unlike his bigger counterpart, he's actually really fast, meaning that he can do really good at making push. We put this to good use against Dr. Bright. Little Turking's face change does huge damage to Dr. Bright. Because Little Turking is... Okay, if I say that, I'll get cancelled. But you get the point. An issue with Little Turking is that it can die before it does the attack, making it lose a lot of value. But regardless, we de defeat Dr. Bright pretty easily. From this, we get level 10 Little Turking, and therefore get his ult, Little Infernus. Now having defense as well as a stronger fire called Hellfire. Hellfire can be applied to fire immune units and has a faster tick rate. At uh, half HP, the Infernus gets an aura that applies Hellfire and a longer sword, so therefore more range. He pretty much just destroys everything in his path. This, again, is foreshadowing. Anyways, we make it to Insecure, and we saw with early game builders. We clear the built up enemies pretty easily with our cannon, stall more, at level 7 eco, we send out some units because little man's here. After maxing our economy, we can pretty easily push because of how good little Infernus is here. The food prompt gives them annoying stall options, but it's manageable. Speed is the next prompt, and we manage to use- we manage to get by despite some small issues. Little Infernus constantly applying Hellfire to everything makes it really easy to push here. Phase 2 goes really poorly for Insecure. Uh, I'll just show you what happens. Yeah, poor guy. Once destroyed base later, and we pass through the rest of chapter 3 to exec. I stall early the game with Builder and use Karka to clear the enemies. I start stacking up a backline and get pretty far in, but phase 2 gives me a lot of issues. And then a speed buff fat boy ends me. Next round, I use Little Turking instead of Little Infernus and make it all the way to phase 3. It takes a long while for me to kill him, and we have a close call with a fat boy, but we manage to take out exec. And I don't know what caused this sound effect at the end here. But yeah, we end up winning, but 3 Star Chapter 3 is something else entirely. Going in, I didn't know if Dr. Bright was going to give me issues, and lo and behold, it in fact did so. I had to do so much experimentation to win this fight. I eventually found my only way to win was with Bomb and Lil Turking, basically rushing down Dr. Bright. Any form of backline wouldn't do nearly enough damage before they got blinded to, to take out Dr. Bright. As well, they wouldn't have enough damage to kill the amputators and the butchers. One of my runs, I end up actually getting the kill on Dr. Bright. But, because my base was so low, I end up dying from mad scientists hitting my base over and over again. Oh, I have to go back and do it over again. This time, I swap out some of my units to be more aggressive to let a push after we kill Dr. Bright. And it ends up working. We haven't escaped anything yet, it only gets worse from here. Now we have to deal with Insecure. An issue I run into immediately is getting rushed in the early game. If a penny gets to my base, I just have to reset. There's nothing I can do about that. We lose a lot of runs to be oh, being overwhelmed in the early game. And I end up swapping to Kamikaze, which was the right play because it's more aggressive. But I swapped to a little Turking as well, which was not the right move. But what I also start doing is cycling prompts. Basically, I go in, and if I see speed or food, uh, as one of the first two, it's basically a no-go. You can see in the uh, middle of the map which prompts you're gonna get, but these two are so annoying that it'll just end up making you lose. Good set, I actually play the run. I get a good run here. Blinders are a huge issue though. I cannot build up a backline if they end up with melee range, so I still lose. Over time, I managed to feel out the early game and I ended up optimizing a huge amount. My next run, I make it to phase two, due to swapping to Little Infernus. Because the Hellfire Aura can clear blinders way easier than Little Turking can. On this run, I end up winning. The Hellfire Aura chips away at the HP of Insecure, especially in Phase 2. So this lets me move on. But hold up. 
we got a roadblock. The compression bomb was a difficulty spike that I definitely saw coming. Fat boy is insanely tanky here with 2.4 thousand HP and 50% damage resistance. So effectively 4.8 thousand HP. No matter how much DPS I throw their way, I couldn't seem to optimize. Sometimes I get a push, but I end up failing anyways. And so I'd given up. But when I was on a call with some of my friends, including two fellow consecrators being Derpy and Xenoversify, I mentioned that I, I was giving up here. And Derpy said to me something along the lines of, Oh, you're the Battle Bricks guy. If anyone could do this, you can. And so, with li the little hope I had left, I decided to go try again. But through, through sheer luck, I ended up pushing, and after a miserable and stressful 15 minutes, I managed to destroy their base. Does this mean the challenge is possible? Heck no. We still have execs to deal with. And I genuinely think this is impossible. For real this time. Exec is brutal. Making it past the first fat boy is hellish. You need the stars to align to kill this thing. And then you have to pray that exec gives you the right commands to be able to kill the next fat boy. I died countless times. I made it to phase two a few times, but I just died. Even on a run where I felt like I had the perfect setup, max eco before phase two, a good stack, and yet the first fat boy in phase two ended the run. Feel free to try this out yourself if you want to, but I don't think anything is helping this. Even if I had Omega Friend, it'd be way too expensive and it would just get hyper lasered. Well, I guess that's that done. By the way, here's proof I didn't use the bricks. All right, just so nobody can try to like tell me this, tell me that this is fake in the comments. I'm uh, here to prove that um, this was really, I really did do this. So you can see I'm on my alt account. I go to main chapter. You can see I have the progress here. I have this, you know, you can see haven't been three star exec. Like, I've gotten to it though. And if we go to shop, can see no special units bought aside from you know the free ones, and no. No gotcha units, literally none. Zero. So uh, yeah, if that isn't proof enough, then um, shut up. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be good, burb out.